and welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show with barefaced lies and well masked truths. On David Mitchell's team tonight, a comedian who's been all over the world, from Australia to the United States. In fact, the only place he hasn't been is a hairdresser's. It's Alan Davis. <laughs> And a woman who, when she was at university, earned a first-class degree in romantic poetry. I must tell her the one I wrote. There once was a man from Nantucket who's another time. It's Jermaine Greer! <laughs> and on Lee Mack's team tonight, he's the host of Pointless, one of BBC's most popular tea-time shows, or as students call it, breakfast television. It's Richard Osman. <laughs> And a footballer who played for Nottingham Forest, Newcastle United, Spurs, Aston Villa and QPR, meaning he was either hugely in demand or couldn't get on with anybody. <laughs> it's a Jermaine Genus! <laughs> and so we begin with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. Now, to make things harder, they've never seen the card before, they've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Uh, Richard, you're up first tonight. Last year, at a party, I shared a jacuzzi with three of the eggheads. Jerry <laughs> 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 Mitchell's team. <laughs> Wh which, which three eggheads? <laughs> oh, uh, it was uh, Barry. <laughs> I, know, I know, right? <laughs> Kevin. And Chris. Do the eggheads, are they only allowed in a jacuzzi for three minutes? <laughs> <laughs> um, what was the party? Well, it was, it was a, all of the sort of uh, quiz shows together. We were doing a big photo shoot, uh, and it was us. And by us, I mean pointless. Um, it was eggheads, uh, the chase, and uh, like 15 to 1. <laughs> and it, and it, how'd, you, how'd you get all them in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just out of interest, who initiated the jacuzzi in? There have been some photographs in it earlier in the evening, and then later in the evening, people, uh, people okay. were jumping in of their own accord. Right. Okay. What was the photo shoot for? <clears throat> Radio Times, TV Times, one of those. So, so with the, the, the concept for the photo was three eggheads and you in a jacuzzi. <laughs> what, were the, what were the 15 to 1ers and the, and the chasers doing? We were, photo we were doing all sorts of photographs, drinking champagne, jacuzzi. It was supposed to be, you know... Decadence and all this kind of stuff. The I concept think it was, was, de I think it was decadence in the quizzing community. I think it was I think <laughs> champagne, chocolates, just being decadent. I think. Chocolates yes. in a jacuzzi. Not in a jacuzzi. Sort of a, a, a box of black magic bobbing. <laughs> <laughs> I think photographing a lot of people from different quiz shows in a ridiculously kind of opulent setting is, is the sort of idea that a listings at magazine might have. For example, with the last series of this, they had us sitting round a table pretending to play poker and pulling loads of faces. Yes. It's the kind of stunt that they, they do, rather than just having a normal photograph and then a, a note of when the programme is on, which is all you need. <laughs> <laughs> I rather enjoyed the, the oh. poker photo. It's a lovely opportunity to spend time with you and Lee out of this environment, but never mind if you weren't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, Rob, I also had a terrible time. <laughs> It's time to make your mind up. <laughs> what way are you leaning, Alan? I don't, I don't think it's true. I can see the photo shoot, but I just can't see him when a jacuzzi. Continuing to party at the end of a photo shoot is cer was certainly not something we considered, was it, Lee, <laughs> at the end of the, uh, the <laughs> aforementioned... Uh, Literally, poker. as he put the cap on the end of the camera like that, <laughs> we were in the taxi, weren't we? Yeah. <laughs> and I remember as we drove off, winding the window down and hearing, it's my round, lads. Yeah. <laughs> It's my round! <laughs> Take your head down, he's looking! Rob sent, yeah, Rob sent me the end of his anecdote in five long texts. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Jermaine, what do you think? I'm going to say... Is this a musical? <laughs> you say the lie. You a think lie. it's a lie. A lie. So you both think it's a lie. Yeah. We'll say lie. You're going to say it's a lie. OK, so Richard, jacuzzis, photo shoot, truth or lie? It is. Lie. Hey! Oh. Yes, it's a lie. Richard didn't share a jacuzzi with three of the eggheads. Uh, Jermaine Greer, your turn. Whenever I travel by tube, I look around the carriage to decide who I'd eat first. <laughs> if we were a group of people stranded on a desert island. 
Three. Wow. <laughs> I hope this isn't true, Jermaine. <laughs> Although we are now all doing it. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think we all know yeah, what we're thinking. Know, know. <laughs> yeah. It's not, it's certainly not going to end well for me. Who can I use? You can eat you and make a raft out of the bones. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jermaine, is this a thing you only do on the tube? Well, you know how, I mean, you can sit in the tube, stupefied with boredom, and, and ask yourself what everyone would look like undressed. And that is just <laughs> so, so depressing a thought that I started to work variations on this theme and thinking, you know, who looks uh, toothsome? Toothsome? Yes. <laughs> Who would you like to sink your teeth into? I thought looking <laughs> toothsome meant you had a lot of teeth. Well, you thought wrong. <laughs> really? Did I really? <laughs> How do you make the judgment call, then? Is it just the fattest, or...? No, it's not just the fattest, because they're probably the least interesting. Uh, you well, might interesting. decide... Interesting. Well, interesting. Well, because it's interesting. Because it's just lard. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's positively correlated with youth. So you like uh -oh. eating, the idea of eating you? <laughs> Imagine, Jermaine, we're all on the tube together. Hang on, she's eyeing me up here. <laughs> she's fully eyeing me up. In which order do you eat us? Well, Jermaine is quite right. He has to go first. <laughs> He's the fittest. That's an He's assumption. <laughs> Thank you very much. So you're starting with Jermaine. All right, we'll allow you that. Who do you turn to next? I think it'd probably be Alan next. <laughs> it's hard to know if it's a compliment or not, isn't oh. it? <laughs> do you remember that feeling at school when you were lined up and they were picking the football team? <laughs> and the only thing you could think was, I better not be last. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening again! <laughs> so you've got Jermaine and Alan. Who do you go to next? Oh, uh, David, I think. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> It does feel like an honour, doesn't it? It does. I'm very, I'm very proud to finish in the top half of the table. <laughs> why, why would you go to... Why, for Lord's sake, would you go to David before me, <laughs> to a lesser extent, Lee, and Richard? Why? I, I think Richard would be a bit difficult to handle, to manage. <laughs> so you've got the three of us left. Who's next? And it'd be a matter of how one cooked you. <laughs> Crackling oh. is what comes to mind. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if she's insulting me or praising me. <laughs> Everybody loves crackling if it's made properly. Yes, I like that. So it's me next, is it? <laughs> well, yes, maybe. Look, this is getting out of hand, I'm afraid. I'm full of it. I'm Could not you even hungry it... anymore. Could you take it a little more seriously, please. So you're left now. You're left. With the two stragglers, you've been pushing them round your plate. You really don't want to know. It's oh Lee and oh Richard. Who do you go to next? I can't help thinking at this point I'd have probably got off the tube. <laughs> <laughs> so who was last? Just to be sure. <laughs> For when I get the t-shirts. I thought I'd. <laughs> I thought I'd spared Richard. You spared Richard because you think he's too big. So Lee, let him go. Lee is technically last. Excellent. So, so Lee is <laughs> Lee is last, but you refuse to eat Richard at all. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? It's very detailed about what. When she, looked, she knew. When she looked into your eyes, I said, I'd like I to saw. Meet him yeah, first. Yeah, I, I told you the eyes told me, yeah, you're going. Like. <laughs> <laughs> To be honest with you, in, in makeup room before, I was like, that, it's, it's, things are coming back to me now, actually. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, she, she, she was basting you, wasn't she? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what's it going to be? What do we think, Richard? Well, I think, well, just look in her eyes, it's so true. So, you both think it's true? <laughs> yeah. I think it's, it's a lie. Oh, do you? Yeah. But I'll go true. with the majority, because okay. I'm weak. You're going to say true. Jermaine, truth or lie? Lie. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yes, it was a lie all along. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest. And it's up to Lee's team to spot who is telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Wally. <laughs> Wally. 
So, Jermaine Greer, what is Wally to you? Oh, this is Wally. He's the crane driver who once let me sit in his cabin 50 feet above my house. <laughs> Alan, how do you know Wally? This is Wally, and during one of his driving lessons, I crashed into the co-op. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, David, what is your relationship with Wally? Uh, this is Wally, and he intervened when I got into a whispered row with a woman in a library. <laughs> Lee's team, where do you want to start? Wally's got the top half of uh, Alan's face and the bottom half of David's. <laughs> <laughs> I think the phone Jermaine's got that was in her fridge. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, let's start with Alan. When was this? Uh, I was 17. Sorry, this was a lesson or a test? It was the, it was the day before my test. Um, okay. I'm in a mini. Yeah. Right. And Wally's with me, helping me learn. Oh, he, w he wasn't the instructor? He's not a driving instructor. Oh, OK, so he's your mate. Right, and what, what caused you to go into the co-op? Um, <laughs> I, just, I didn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled out in front of me, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Talk us through the incident, then. It was it's where I grew up. I grew up in Essex. OK. And it was the biggest um, supermarket in Europe. The co-op. The co-op. <laughs> Which town was that in? In Loughton, where I, that's where oh, I Oh, the Loughton co-op. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the only supermarket you see from oh, space. See it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hard to spot if you're driving. <laughs> <laughs> did you scrape it or did you go no, bang into it? straight into it. <laughs> into, a, into a window or a wall? A wall. So, so, sorry. It, instead it, of breaking, I accelerated. How much damage did you do to the car? Um, well, it wouldn't go. <laughs> really? It was that bad? Yeah. I can't get over the hair. They've got to be mates. Why? <laughs> they come from that town where that is the hair. Yeah. yeah. How did you the, the manager of the co-op, who came out with presumably the same hairstyle... <laughs> <laughs> how did he... How did he react? Maybe Alan tried to know. blame Wally, pointed, but there was, like, 20, 30 <laughs> blokes, <laughs> and you had to work out where Wally was. <laughs> So the, so the manager came out, and what was the response? I don't remember anyone coming out. The car has gone into the into the, <laughs> the wall of the co-op, and everything just carries on. Did you have to put a pound into the back to release it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, who would you like to uh, speak to next? Um, Jermaine, what was the crane doing? I presume there was building work going on. It, w it was to do with an electricity substation. So he was doing some work. The crane was there for a few days before I actually approached him right. and asked him if I could go up in the cabin. And when I first asked him, he was distinctly unkeen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you say you asked him, where was he? Or did you shout? He'd... Could I come up to your cabin? <laughs> <laughs> He'd come down off the crane. Oh, he'd, he was already down, ready yeah. to go over. You and grabbed him away. So Shut I asked there, if I could nip up and have a look at him. And did he go up with you? No. Well, the thing is, he didn't really want to do it. So I did my best to persuade him. How did you persuade him? You, what, you put a white hanky over his mouth and something? <laughs> <laughs> you said, smell that, and he woke up in the cabin. <laughs> to be dragged up unconscious. I couldn't have done that. Let it was me only just the say practicalities that... that stopped her from doing that. <laughs> Let me simply say that money changed hands. Oh. oh. And how much did he have to pay you? <laughs> <laughs> so did you both go up to the cabin? He, he said I had to go first, just in case I missed my footing. And he, and he went up right behind you? Not right Wally, behind you. Wally, you pervert! <laughs> <laughs> OK, so you're up in the crane. Yeah. Is there room for two people in those things? Barely. It was... So it was intimate? Not, ne not really, but it was You can't have it both ways. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly can't have it both ways in that. It's too small. <laughs> <laughs> have 
have some respect for Jermaine Green. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry about my friend. It was pretty cramped, but he showed me how you use the controls. You're telling me now that you actually had a go of it? No, I didn't have a go of but it. But he showed you how to but do I, it. But I... Well, I can use a digger and an excavator, so I know how to balance the two hands. Well, why, why do you know how to use a digger? No, because I dig holes. <laughs> What about uh, David? David, can you remind me of your statement? This is Wally, and he intervened when I had a whispered row with a woman in a library. <laughs> what was the row about? It was about noise. <laughs> <laughs> Who started the yeah. row? Who started the row? I, well, I would say she started it, but the noise that it was about was my responsibility. I was, I was in the loo. Was, was what... <laughs> What? I was in the loo I, when the noise happened, but the noise didn't emanate from the loo. <laughs> it was my phone ah, made the noise ah. while I was in the loo. Because <gasps> it was on silent, but it, it vibrated and sort of... Where you know, was it? On the, you left I'd it left it library. on the table. Oh, you left the thing, gone to the toilet. my laptop. So you come back from the toilet. Could you hear the... It's that... Uh, noise, <laughs> yes? <laughs> well, that's, as, yes, I, I was in the toilet. And you heard um, the... Uh, no. <laughs> no, I, no, I couldn't hear that noise yeah. from... <laughs> <laughs> oh, great, he's now doing impressions of inanimate objects. <laughs> I thought he was doing Do me blender. on the toilet. Do Sorry. <laughs> well, that's not you on the toilet. <laughs> well, that's more right. I wonder how long I'll be here. <laughs> So, what happens next? Well, I come out of the toilet and she's immediately incensed and comes up to me and has a massive whispered go at me. What does she about, say? She says, I've, I've been trying to work in here and you've been making noise all the time and now that phone has gone off two or three times. And, and I'm sort of going, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't realise this. I just had left it there and there. I'm very, there's no need to take that tone with me, though. <laughs> So look, I'll turn my phone off now. I'm sorry, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it, this carries on for a few minutes, and then Wally, who works there, uh, comes up and, and has a word with us both and says, please, you know, be quiet and get on with your work. OK, we do need an answer. So Lee's team is Wally, Jermaine's crane companion, Alan's car crasher, or David's bookish buddy. He's got a bit of library about him, hasn't he? He has got, got a this, whiff yeah. of book about him. <laughs> <laughs> he, he that's like, that's yeah. my new fragrance for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to choose, I would say Alan. What are you thinking, Jermaine? The, the whispering argument, I can actually... I can see it happening. Yeah. And I bizarrely think it might be Jermaine. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so Jermaine thinks it's David. Yeah, I think it's Alan. <laughs> you think it's Alan? <laughs> And you think and it's, I Jermaine. Think it's Jermaine? <laughs> Let's say Jermaine then. Jermaine has to pick. <laughs> yeah, I think Jermaine should say Jermaine. I'm handing the leadership qualities over to Jermaine. All right. And letting him decide who it is. What do you say, Jermaine? He says Jermaine. Uh, we collectively think it's David. <laughs> no! <laughs> no, we don't! So, <laughs> Shane David. OK. So. <laughs> Lee's team, after a thorough democratic process, <laughs> are settling on David. Wally, would you please reveal your true identity? My name is Wally, and I was teaching Alan how to drive <laughs> when he crashed into the car park. Thank you very much, Wally. Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, and we start with... It's Lee. After an incident last year, I have a fear that some of my neighbours think I hunt ducklings. <laughs> David's team. What was the incident? <coughs> oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> ah, got it. So, um, um, I live by a river. Yeah. That much is true. Mm -hmm. We know it's true because we, we... both enjoyed an evening, it... one of his evenings at his house. We have indeed. Do you, do you remember it, David, don't you? Because you, you and Rob both left and then ten minutes later, you snuck back, didn't you? <laughs> 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 He's gone. <laughs> 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 and I remember as David drove off, going, 
I'll give you a lift, David. David! <laughs> David! <laughs> so, I live by the river. <laughs> yeah. And there was a duckling uh, in the front of our house. Let's call it the driveway. Oh, right, right, yeah. And uh, <laughs> I didn't want to say driveway, cos I start making a meal all showbiz that I've got a car. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so there's the duckling, Which right? part of the driveway? Was it down by the gates or where it sweeps up around the lawn? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'd got over the moat, to be honest with you. I said, duckling would be quite good at <laughs> So this <laughs> duckling on its own. Yeah. So there's a duckling the, on the drive. He's on the driveway. Yeah. This was the yellow fluffy variety. Right. And so I decided I must catch the duckling and uh, try and put it back in the water. Yeah. With, in the, in the with, river. W why? You mean why have I got a heart, David? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why did you bother about this non-human yes. thing? <laughs> why did you eat it? <laughs> So, yeah, no, Why duck is... you baste it, <laughs> fry it and shove it in your mouth? Are you saying oh, that it's... I didn't get... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, David. Yeah, I mean, you could... You've had enough time to invent anything. Right. <laughs> so you see... You see the duckling on the drive, yes. you pick up... What is this thing that this, you're picking well, up? Well, this is... Um, I have uh, a, a big net in my house. Right. Yeah. And so... I see this duck and I and I catch it and I and I scoop it up. So I've now got a duck in the net. You're right. And my plan was to look round for lots of baby ducklings and, and a sort of adult sized duck going. Mm. <laughs> 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 and that was my plan. Right. You did say the duckling was yellow. Did I? Yeah, what colour are the ducks on the river? Uh oh. What? <laughs> can, we, can we go to conference for a moment? <laughs> uh, because the ducks on the river are almost certainly mallards. Yes. And their ducklings are not yellow. Yeah, but this wasn't complete. This wasn't a pure I don't mallard. care. Wrong. <laughs> now, one of the most important things not to do with ducklings when you find them in the spring yeah. is to touch them or handle oh, them at leave, all. Because the mother will reject them. Yes. I didn't handle him, I netted him. <laughs> do you know why I didn't handle him? Because the mother would have rejected it. <laughs> so how far have you walked? A long at this way, point? because I couldn't find any ducks and any ducklings. So I'm now walking up and I have noticed that people have passed me and I've given them the, all right, and they've gone, all right, ah. <laughs> Dawn's on me after half a mile, they're going, I think this stretch of the river, which is famous for fishing, I think that weirdo has been catching ducklings. <laughs> they think I've scooped one out, because it's a proper big fish in there right. I've got. So I decided to go home, ring up the RSPCB. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's PCD. B, I said. D. P. It's the RSPB. Oh, sorry. sorry. RSPB, or, you idiot. Or the RSPCA. <laughs> you thought it was D, you weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> Preventing cruelty to ducklings. That's a very niche market. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. We're only goslings. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think, David? Is he telling the truth? I should point out that we did find out that uh, it was goose. So it was a bright yellow gosling. It was bright yellow, and I thought it was a duckling, and it turned out to be Goslings a gosling. Goslings are bright yellow. Ooh. Are they? Mm. OK, yeah. what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, it's so heavily embroidered, this story. Yeah. But I think it's substantially true. Alan? Well, I, throughout the story, I thought it was a complete nonsense. Yes, I did throughout. But then there was something about him saying they came back and they said actually it was a baby goose, and it having been yellow... That, that's tipped me into thinking it might be true. I'm going to say true. True? Yeah. OK. Lee, truth or lie? It is, in fact, true. <laughs> Next. <laughs> it's Jermaine. The night before the biggest game of my career, a teammate woke me up by practising his trumpet. <laughs> David's team. I'm assuming that's not a euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> what time was this? 12... 12.30, something like that. So why were you cohabiting with a trumpeter? <laughs> 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 oh, just please, please, 
just used that as the trailer. And nothing. <laughs> that's, just, that's it. That's all we need. It's not something that you ask, is it? I mean, are you a trumpeter? <laughs> and let's room together. I don't know. But just... he was—he was from your team. He was. Yeah, he was in my team. What team was it? Uh, when I was at Newcastle United. So where were you? Where... I was in a, well, a hotel. A hotel. Yeah. Uh, it, where? Um, it was. In Newcastle. Think about the other team you were playing. <laughs> <laughs> and it was probably the same answer. Say in Newcastle. It was in Newcastle, yeah. Why but, would you so, be in a hotel in your own hometown? Because we were playing against Sunderland. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the manager likes to just keep the players together. Ah, oh, yes, oh, right. I have okay. lock and key. Yeah. Who was the trumpeter? It was Nobby Solano. Oh, Nobby Solano. He's from Peru. What was he playing? <laughs> Well, I can't help thinking, if someone wakes you up playing a trumpet in your ear, you don't go, oh, what is that? Is that... <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 don't tell me, carry on playing. Uh, I'll get this. It was something like, you know, them Mexican kind of food adverts, like... <laughs> no, 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 no! no. <laughs> and you say this was Nobby Solero? Nobby Solero Nobby is a very Solano. adult ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> So where is he trumpeting? He was like, kind of like, sat at the edge of his bed, like this, with a stand and. With stand? It, with... <laughs> <laughs> He'd set Where'd up. His... Say, if this is a lie, don't push it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> he set up. Stand at a He set up his music stand. <laughs> tunic. He got a tunic and a hat on. <laughs> under his chin. Two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> And what was his excuse? That he's practising, that was it. And did the conversation go further? Did you say... Well, I just said, you know, put it away. <laughs> <laughs> and and also it. start playing the trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I mean, I know the world of football is not one that you're overly <clears throat> familiar yes, with. but I am an expert in nocturnal trumpeting. So... <laughs> <laughs> you know, it balances out, what yeah. do you think? Yeah. It's certainly true that... Uh, people tolerate a lot of noise in South America, generally. OK. You think...? I wouldn't be surprised. I'm going true. Well, I'm... go true. OK. Jermaine, truth or lie? It's true. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. And that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show. I can reveal David's team have five points and Lee's team have nil. <laughs> Of course, it's not just a team game. My individual liar of the week this week is Jermaine Greer. <laughs> yes, Jermaine Greer, a feminist who not only burned her bra, but now her pants are on fire as well. Good night. <laughs>